Daniel chapter 3 is our passage for today, Daniel chapter 3, and I want to walk you through a, a very familiar story. It's really about the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. And what I want to talk about today, no, no, nobody's going to shout, nobody's going to run around, ain't going to be no dancing on this one. I want to talk about principles of a committed disciple. The Lord is calling us to be disciples. That's what our church is about. Our church is about developing dynamic disciples. We got a lot of people who are Christian by preference. Not many are Christians by conviction. And I'm going to take a moment and talk about the, the, the distinction. So we, when we have a preference for Christianity, we identify with Christianity when it's convenient. When it's, when it's popular. Yeah. When, when you're around other church folk. But when you're around unchurched people, it's not such a popular thing to be a Christian. But in this particular passage here today, I'm going to talk about these, the Hebrew boys, because um, they model for you and I that, that our lifestyle, somebody say lifestyle, a lifestyle ought to be a reflection that we are committed to a walk with God that we recognize he sees us every day and every moment. When you are committed, um, when the opportunity to tell the truth or a lie pops up, you choose to tell the truth. When you have an opportunity to steal, you don't compromise and you don't steal. Y'all notice a lot of y'all didn't say amen on that one. Because <laughs> you're guilty. Yeah, you know, you steal from your jobs. I bet you if I went to some of y'all houses right now, you got U.S. government pens all over your, all over your house. And... Okay, all right, I'll leave that alone. Anyway, anyway, as I was saying, we're, we're, we're trying to make people, we're trying to f uh, disciple you to be a disciple of Jesus. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are three Hebrew boys who model for us living a dis disciplined life. King Nebuchadnezzar had created a golden image the image, the golden image he created was 90 feet tall, nine feet wide, and he commanded everybody that when the music plays, they were to bow down. But these three young men decided that they were not going to bow down to a false image, nor worship a false god. And the word got back to the king and the king gave them the opportunity. This, this, Daniel chapter three. Are y'all there? Y'all are there? Um, in verse number, let me start at verse eight. Can I start at verse eight? I know I told them, I told them something else, but I'm gonna start at verse eight. Actually, I think I'm gonna start at verse four. Maybe I should start at verse one. Because we got time. Might as well tell the whole story, don't cut anything off. Can y'all hang, hang with a brother? Yeah, let's start at verse one. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width six cubits. He set it up 
in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon, and King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Stop, stick a pen right there. Can I just talk about it while I'm going down this text? All of the officials, all of the leaders, all of the politicians, all of the government leaders were in place. And they called everybody together for a gathering to bow down to the image that the king had set up. I don't know if y'all understand or not, but we live in a culture where many images and gods have been established. And they want us, they want the world to bow down. They want us to bow down to abortion. Thank all five of y'all for that, amen. They want us to bow down to the LBQRSTUV community. I'm sorry, I just don't know it by heart. I haven't studied it. Don't, 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 don't write me no letters. Don't get mad. I just haven't learned to say. I don't even know what it. They, I don't even know what they all mean. But that agenda has been put in front of us, and they want us to bow down. I'm sorry, I cannot bow down to that. But the world is. The world is saying it's okay even though God said it's not. Verse number four says, then a herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the iron, the horn, flute, harp, Lar, psaltery, and sympathy with all the kinds of music. Let me put it in today's language. The day you hear Beyonce say it, <laughs> you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. The, the consequences, the result, if you don't do it, have been established. It's been set. You'd be thrown into a fiery furnace. So at that time, verse 7, so at that time, verse 7, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, in sympathy with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Do y'all see that? Are y'all with me so far? Therefore, verse eight, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony, symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Verse 12, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your God or worship the gold image which you have set up. Somebody say, stick a pin right there. These three guys have made a decision that they, they weren't going to bow down. They are a rare breed. The whole nation is bowed down, but these three guys said we can't do it. Our nation is lacking political leaders and lacking even religious leaders to take a stand for what's right and what's true. They are, they are persuaded by who gives the most money who funds their political agendas. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying here today. 
but I'm looking, trying to find somebody who can't be bought. That's what I'm trying to say. We're trying to find people who will stand up for what's righteous and can't be bought. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, he was pissed off. I'm sorry, and let me use the King James word. He was pissed off. <laughs> Gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, is it true Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lar, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall not be cast, you shall be cast. If, if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? The king gave them an ultimatum. Bow down. Worship what I have created. And, and, and here these guys, I'm so proud of these fellas. Because Shadrach, Meshach, let me, t let me talk about this for a second. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Here's what they're saying, we don't need to think about that. We, we're not, we, we don't have to ponder it, we don't have to go into no huddle, because we have a conviction. Here's what they're saying, we have a conviction. Now the question is, do you have convictions? Some of us don't have, some of y'all don't have no convictions on anything. You flow with wherever the crowd is that you with. You hang out and you agree. If you're with the drug crew, you go with the drug crew. Whatever crowd you with, you speak their language, you sing their song, you go along with their agenda, you agree with their statements. But these fellas said, we don't, even, we don't have to think about that. I'm wondering, do y'all have any convictions? Ask your neighbor, do you have any convictions? Let me tell you how you know if you have a conviction. Let me tell you how you know whether or not you have a conviction. Some years ago, the Supreme Court defined how you know you have a conviction. It said, first of all, your conviction must be seen. It must be evident. Don't, don't claim to be a Christian, but there's no evidence that you're a Christian. Don't claim to be a Christian, but you don't go to church on Sundays. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to you. They, must, they say it must be seen. It must be, it's something that must be visible. And they say it also must be consistent. If you have a conviction, you're not flipping and flopping. It, you have a regular pattern and it must not change. That's a conviction, it stays the same. It doesn't flow with what's unpopular or what's convenient. And these fellas in verse 16 are basically saying they have a conviction. They said, and here's what I love about these guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have no Bible like we have. They didn't have, the Holy Spirit wasn't residing in them like he resides in you and I today. They didn't have any of that. They didn't have a church family to go to, but yet they had convictions. And they said to the king, look here, Ned, we don't need to reason with you in this matter. I like that. Somebody say, I like their conviction. 
I got some convictions. Can I talk about my convictions? I believe that this is the final authority for my life right here, the Word of God. This is how I rule my life, not people's opinions. Not, I don't rule it by what some actor or actress says or some political figure or some, some celebrity. No, my life is governed by the teaching of the truth of the Word of God. I have, I have a conviction that my body belongs to God. It is His temple. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. My body is the temple of God. That's why I ain't got tattoos all over my, all over my bodies. I, 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 ooh, y'all got quiet on that one. I, I felt, I hit something right there. I felt a quickening inside of me because my body belongs to God and I want to I wanna keep it and take care of it. I'm trying to eat right, do right, exercise, care for it. I'm, my body is the temple of God. Go, ladies, I'm talking to y'all. You don't just give your body up to it. Okay, let me leave that alone right there for just a second. Ooh, it's tight, but it's right. I told y'all wouldn't be no shouting today. Wouldn't be no dancing. Ain't nobody running around. I have a conviction that my money must be earned and managed by God's principles. That's why I'm not standing in the lotto line. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. My marriage is a lifelong commitment. Some of y'all go through marriages like you buying a new car. Yeah, I'm committed to my marriage. My wife tried to leave me one time, and when she went to pack her clothes, I went in the closet behind her, broke out the suitcase. I said, I'm tired of this marriage too. I'm going with you. Wherever you're going, I'm going with you. She can't leave me because I'm going to go wherever she go. My children are, I've, I've tried to raise my kids according to biblical truth. Sometimes I feel I've been successful. Sometimes I feel I failed. But my kids would tell you that our household was raised by biblical truth and principle. They, they, I, okay, I feel tension in the room again. Whenever y'all feel tension, I gotta dwell there for just a few moments because I feel tension. So, so somebody call for me if a bill collector call. By the way, bill collectors don't call my house because I pay my bills on time. I don't have people calling my house and me telling my kids, tell them I'm not here. I'm letting that sink in for a few minutes. I've tried to raise them according to biblical principles. My goals and my priorities are from God. My goals for life, my priorities in life are from God. My actions and conversations must honor God. Yeah, I don't cuss. Amen. All the time. <laughs> The problem with today's church is we pick and choose what we will and will not do. We have selective commitments, selected convictions. We pick the ones we like and we reject the ones we don't. We pick the ones we agree with and we disregard the ones we don't like. Our goal, our desire as a church is to try to disciple you that you obey the scriptures whether you like the principle or not. When you have a conviction, you're not going to lie on a loan application just to get a loan for a new house. When you have convictions, you're not going to lie on your tax returns. These fellas bless me because they said we have no need to answer you in this matter. 
They, they, I, I love, I love their posture. I love their attitude. They have uncompromising convictions. Write that down. Uncompromising convictions. Let me stick a pin here for a second because I want to challenge you to have some uncompromising things that you will not compromise under any circumstance. Uncompromising convictions. Commit to uncompromising convictions. Y'all, did y'all hear me on that? Y'all got that? Jot that down. They have uncompromising convictions. Now, here's the second thing they did. They had convictions. And I, and I want you to, I'm praying and challenging you to have convictions. And then in verse 17, listen to this. Here's my second point. Let me already give it to you. I'm going to read it to you. They had unwavering confidence. Somebody see my U and C's. Y'all see my, my UC's, or my, my U's and my C's there. Unwavering confidence. Here's what they said in verse 17. Listen to this. They said, oh, I said, we have no need to answer you in this matter. And then they said this. If that is the case, if you're going to put this in a fiery furnace, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. I like that kind of attitude. They're saying it doesn't matter what you do, do what you will. The God we serve is able to deliver us. I'm looking for some people who believe deep down in their heart, no matter what you go through, no matter what your circumstances might be, that the God we serve is more than capable and able of bringing you out. That's why I feel like shouting and dancing today because I am persuaded and I believe that the God I serve is more than capable and able to bring me out of whatever I'm facing. He will do whatever needs to be done. He will open up doors, whatever door needs to be opened. He'll do whatever it takes to bring me out from this situation. You know what I like they said? They said, our God is able. Somebody ought to high five somebody nearby and say, my God is able. You got to know that we serve a God who is capable. He's got the power. He's got the might. He's more than able. And whatever the circumstances is, he'll bring us from you, O king. He'll deliver us out of your hands. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody today is facing a situation they need deliverance from. And I prophesy to you right now, you stand up for what's right and the God we serve will bring you out. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going against, whatever's coming up against you, whatever's challenging you, it might come and face you, but it's okay. God can and will bring you out. I feel like shouting when I think about how able God is. He's an able God. Won't he do it? Somebody tell your neighbor, won't he do it? He's an able God. He will fight your battles. He will open the doors. He will bring deliverance. He will. He will bring me out. He will answer my prayer. He will give me the victory. He will save me or deliver me one way or the other. He'll bring me and deliver me from you, O King. Andre Crouch once sung a song, says, I got confidence that God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. That's what you got to know, that we serve a God who will and can fix it for you. But if he chooses not to do it the way I want it, is not because he's not able. (laughs) Do I have a witness anywhere in the camp? That if he doesn't do it the way I want it, it's not because he doesn't have the power to do it. He is more than able to do it. You know what I believe God will do? 
he, he might, you might not keep your job. They might fire you, but God might deliver you by giving you a better job, making more money than you had with the job that you had. I'm, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know who this word is for, but receive it in your soul. God is more than able. Just believe that we serve a God who's able. Somebody tell your neighbor, somehow, some way, he's going to fix this. Somehow, some way, I'm coming out of this. Somehow, some way, he's going to fight the battle for me. Somehow, some way, I'm going to get to victory. Somehow, some way, I'm going to win. Somehow, some way, I'm going to be up and not down. The victor and not the victim. Somehow, some way. Hallelujah. I feel a shout down in my soul. I got confidence. I believe God. I believe the God that I serve is more than able. Wait a minute. I haven't even read the best part yet. Verse, t- verse 18 says, he said, verse 17, he will deliver us from your hand, O, o king. Verse 18, but if not, you, you got to have a but if not attitude. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. It don't matter. We ain't bowing down to that. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Somebody tell, tell two or three people, but if not. I'm still not bowing down. I'm still not going. Do whatever you want to do. We still not aborting no babies. Do what it, say what you want. We ain't marrying a man with a man and a woman with a woman. Say what you want to say. I will not bow down. I will not compromise. I will not change. Say what you want. Do what you want. I will not change. Anybody who's with me? Hey! Hallelujah! I won't bow down. I won't compromise. I am persuaded that he is more than able to deliver me. He's more than able to fight my battle. He's more than able Tell you, you are going to face situations in your life where the enemy is going to suggest to you compromise. It's coming. It's coming. The devil going to suggest, go ahead, take that money. Ain't nobody going to know you took it. Go ahead, make that choice. Make, that's what the devil's gonna say. Nobody will know about it. But when you are a committed disciple, 
you don't, you don't compromise. I feel tension in the room. Let me read verse 19. Can I read the rest of this to you? Just, just hang with me to read the rest. Y'all don't have to sit down because you make me feel like I'm preaching when you're standing. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I better say this, you better be careful about putting your hands on me. Don't mess with me. I'm a child of the most high God. Don't mess with me. Verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fiery? They answered and said to the king, true, true that. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get loose because of what you've gone through. And they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Somebody tell yourself, God is walking with me in my fire. Tell yourself, point to yourself and say, he with me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. Wherever I go, he's in me, with me, beside me, around me, in front of me, behind me. He got my back. Then, Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery spoke, a furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, listen, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, the administrators, the governors, and the king, counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the flame had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not even on them. Y'all ain't here. You ain't gonna smell like what you've been through. You ain't gonna, nobody gonna be able to tell what you've gone through. Somebody go ahead and praise God. You're gonna come out and nobody gonna be able to tell what you've gone through. I'm almost finished. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
Stick your, stick your name right there. Say, blessed be the God of Letty Carr. Blessed be the God of Wilbur Barham. Go ahead, put your stick. Go ahead, say it. Put your name right there. Who sent his angels and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Listen to the king. Therefore, he said, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and the houses shall be made an ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this God. I prophesy to you that there ain't no God like the God that we serve who will deliver you. I got one more verse and I'm finished. Verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach. <laughs> Who am I prophesying to today? Your promotion is about to come. It's in the door. God is about to make it happen. Now y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to you today. God is about to prosper you and promote you and bless you and reward you because you remain committed to his truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. In my life, in my life, I've had two situations where I had bosses who God flipped the script and made me their boss. Y'all, y'all act like y'all don't believe that. Y'all ain't got to believe it. I know what God did for me. I'm only telling you because he got something in store for you. He got something down the pike for you. He got a miracle he wants to work out for you. God is going to shift the script. Somebody tell your neighbor, he's about to flip the script for me. Tell him on, the, tell him on both sides. I, I, he about to promote me. He about to open some doors for me. He's about to reward, do some rewarding for me. And I don't have to wait till it happens before I praise him. I'll go ahead and give him the praise right now. I'll go ahead and give him a shout right now. I'll go ahead and thank him right now. He is more than able. Hallelujah. Thank you. The God we serve is the living God. His name is Jesus. He is the lily of the valley. His name is Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of Lords. I bow down to him. I worship him. I love him. I adore him. I'm committed to him. I obey him. And I suggest to you to do the same thing. He's more than able. The problem with some in this camp today is you've been bowing down to the wrong God. You've been listening to the wrong voice. You've been more concerned about what people say than what God says.
If you have violated God, if you have disobeyed his commands, if you have compromised, you know you, you guilty. It's okay, he will forgive you. He will wipe the slate clean and give you another opportunity to be obedient to him. Whoever you are, just come on down here and say, you know what, I wanna say yes to Jesus now. I wanna give him my life. I, I, I wanna get saved. I want to, somebody say, I want to receive forgiveness of my sins. Make your way out and say, you know what? I want to give my heart to Jesus. He loves you. He died on the cross for you that your sins could be forgiven. I'm so proud of you. Step right there. There's somebody else. Come on, right this moment, right this instant unsaved, backslidden, you need to rededicate yourself to God, right now would be the time to come, right this moment. I see you. Come on, baby. Somebody else, you need Jesus in your life. You need, you want to put your faith in the faith of the one who died and rose from the dead. This is the time. I'm so proud of you, Steve. So proud of you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, Jesus, so proud of you. That's right. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So proud of you. All of y'all are coming. Father, we call on your name today. Jesus, Jesus. So proud of you. Just wait on here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm so proud of you, sweetie. Jesus, right Jesus, 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 Jesus. Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. I'm trying to work right now. Savior, Savior, Savior. That's what he wants to be to you. Savior, Savior, Savior. Call his name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's in the midst of us right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So cry out your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's right, come on. Call the courage of y'all, the courage. Jesus, Jesus, If you're broken, he can heal you. He wants to do it for you today. He wants to do it. He wants to change your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're already saved and you want to, you, you, need a, you know you need a church and you want to come, this, this would be the time for you to come too. Unsaved, backslidden, unsure, or you need a church. You, or you feel God calling to be a part of our church. Right now will be the time for you to come. I see you, sweetie. Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, so proud. Jesus. Step right there on the end. Right? Hallelujah to Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we call your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Give the Lord a shout for these souls here. I am so proud of y'all coming today. I'm very proud of you. I'm so excited for you. The person behind you is an altar counselor. They're going to take you to a room that's been especially set up to meet with you today. And they're going to talk to you. They're going to find out why you come. They're going to ask you some questions. And then they're going to give you some instructions. They're going to pray with you, share some scriptures. Just follow the instructions. Do what they tell you to do, okay? Y'all got it? Father, I thank you for these who've come today. I know you love every last one of them. You know them by name. You know their journey, their life. And I thank you that you spared their life for such a time as this. I simply pray for you to forgive them, cleanse them, wash them, plant them, 
Give them faith to believe, a heart to repent. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Plant them in your vineyard, fill them with your spirit. Almighty God, let their lives never be the same. Same in Jesus' name, amen.